Gratitude. Ownership. Leadership. Discipline. All right, we're here. It is, we got two more games left. Week nine. Yeah. Week nine. Yeah, pretty um, well. Last regular season away game. That's right. Um, first of all, let's talk about Lawton. Um, I was really excited about Lawton. Lawton's always a, a good team. Absolutely. Big team. Um, you know what? I was sitting there, and they kicked a field goal. They were up on a 3-0. I was right. like, oh, we got a football game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah. then uh, my man Stover. Yeah. And Kiefer. That's right. Uh, they're like, no, we no, got this. We're good. We got this. Um, and so we we'll talk about offensive players a game. I'm all about Stover. That's right. what I was all about Stover. I was like super excited for that guy. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, I think he had three, three touchdowns. touchdowns. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about you guys? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, that was obviously our player of the game. Okay. You know, kind of recapping what he said. You know, I felt like we kind of came out a little bit flat. Um, you know, stalled on our first drive. They come, you know, kick a field goal. Then we have a fumble. You know, and I, I felt like, you know, it's not real focused in on the first, you know, the, the beginning of the first quarter. We finally kind of settled in and started doing a little bit better. Had some stops, stuff like that. Defense played lights out, you know, all night coming up, holding them to a field goal, you know, which is a huge deal. Um, but yeah, as you mentioned, you know, Connor Stover, senior, tight end, just awesome kid, could not be a better teammate, um, better athlete, you know, and you kind of watch him and he's, he's, he's one of those stories that he just continually got better, you know, and just kept getting better and better and stronger and faster and, uh, running better routes and all those kind of things, and uh, and he really like you know kind of put the state on notice on on Friday that it like hey this this guy's for real. So uh, he he had an awesome game. He was our player of the game as well. Okay. Uh, and Connor Stover, so just couldn't couldn't happen to a better kid. I mean, just weapons all over the field. That, that was always good to see. And and so what started out to be a good game, you know, good game from the perspective right. of entertainment. Sure. Uh, just it was all chalked off, which I yeah. like to see, but sure. you know. Yeah, it's, uh, you yeah, know, really proud of our kids. You know, like I said, slow start, but, you know, finish strong. Uh, and, you know, and kind of, you know, continue to just get better as the game went on. And kind of, like I said, got settled in after a slow start. All those kind of things. But, you know, Lawton's still Lawton. And Lawton, you know, is big, athletic. They're coached well. Um, you know, I don't know what the all-time record is against Lawton, but I know it's not very good. Uh, with Choctaw versus Lawton, I think that's probably you can fit on one hand how many times you know we've been able to beat Lawton. Right. So it's, it's a it's a neat deal to be able to do. Uh, any chance that, uh, that that you have, you know, to, to beat those guys is is, is good. You know, and also obviously a district win, all those kind of things. Um, also, side note, I got to meet Hat Guy. Okay, tell me about Hat Guy because Hat Guy. So Hat, hat Guy, if you've ever been to a Lawton game, oh, I have, a game yeah. against Lawton, it, it's it's a gentleman's name is John. I met him on Friday, okay. and anytime they score or have a big play, he throws his hat into the air. And so when you're watching film, you know you'll just see this hat flying, you know, in the air. And anyone that's coached high school football that's that's been beat by Lawton or you know has been in a game with Lawton has seen that hat fly way too many times. And so okay. you know, I, I told my wife, I said. You know, uh, I, I don't know, you know, how many more, you know, you never, you, you never, there's no time like the present. And I said, I'm going to meet Hat Guy on Friday. I don't want to, I don't want to wait till next year, you know, in case there's not a next year and I want to go meet Hat Guy. So he couldn't have been nicer. Great high school football fan. Um, you know, I made a comment. I think, you know, all programs should have a fan like that. The guy's loyal to lot no matter what. Okay. You know, excited for the kids, invest in the program, you know, and all those things and just shows up to every game. And I think he's one of one of the many things that makes high school football really cool. Uh, and, and, and if you're a coach, like I said, in Oklahoma, like, okay. you know who Hat Guy is. So, <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm glad you've been with the program that. for a long, long time. Because I usually for football do color. And yeah. so anytime I see something that appears to be a flag. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> right, right. and in football, when you see a hat, yeah. something really wrong has happened, right? Because right. that means their flag uh -huh. is out, their hat is out, maybe beanbags, right. like all chaos is broken loose, which has happened a couple times over the sure. years. So I see that hat. I take my eye off the ball. I go look at what's going on. Right. And then I'm like, I don't see it. Right. And then I miss the whole play because I'm trying to focus on, oh, yeah. is there an unsportsmanlike? Is there a personal foul? Is there a block behind the play? What's going on? And then it's like, oh, it's just some dude throwing his hat. Right. So I'm glad to explain yeah, it. So it's, next it's time. John the hat guy. Next time I'll, I'll, I'll know. And it's like, I'll have a better, I'll have a better <laughs> attitude about yeah. it. Like, stop uh, distracting me. And he's a super, super nice guy. Okay. Well, cool, cool. Yeah. That's a cool story. It is. That's neat. a good it story. Um, let's move on to, to defense. Yeah. Um, it's kind of your usual suspects, you know, Jacoby well, McClain, yeah. the line, the right. line, the line. Yeah, I mean, D-line played exceptionally well. Linebackers played well, as you, as you mentioned with Jacoby. 
Um, you know, but our play of the game was Drake Fitro. Mm -hmm. And Drake had a, had a pick six. Uh, oh, yeah. Drake just shows up in the run fits all the time. You know, Drake's a really cool story of a, a kid, never played football before, been a baseball kid, uh, comes out for football, puts on about 20 pounds of muscle. Uh, and you're watching that kid from, you know, game one till now. I mean, it's, it's a totally different guy. I mean, that, that right. guy is, he, he is becoming an elite playmaker. Um, you know, in, in the run fits as well as, you know, is super athletic where he can go hawk down balls and then shows off his speed, um, you know, when he can go ahead and turn that pick into a pick six pretty fast. So really proud of Drake. Drake's has what we call a growth mindset. He's just been an absolute stud of always want to get better, you know, and he never – he has a, he's a perfect DB where, you know, if it's a bad play, he has a one-play memory, you know, and he's on right. to the next play and, and wondering, you know, hey, I'm – you know, how can I correct that, you know, rather than, you know, oh, I'm sad about it, you know, right. or whatever. So he, he's just an awesome, awesome kid, super tough, super athletic, you know, really fast. And so our defense player of the game, Drake Fitcho. Okay. Well, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we're getting to spread yes. the love a little bit. Because uh, we talked a little bit about this in your office, but what I'm seeing um, is this defense has a huge foot by, football IQ. Oh, super Where smart. they understand – because – Sometimes you see teams, and you've seen teams over the years, where like, okay, they're about to snap the ball, and they're still scrambling along to figure right. out what's going on. But you see your teams, they, they look at the offense, they do their alignment, they're ready to go. You don't see the chaos. Right. Normal teams have a little bit of chaos when they're playing defense because, you know, it's, it, it's, it's gamble. Like, right. you're, you're predicting what they're going to do. And, but the football IQ, I think it's such, been such a – tell me a little bit about how you improve – the football IQ. Well, I mean, you know, uh, Coach Brad Clark, our defense coordinator, does a tremendous job. You know, and EJ Tellinger, our D line coach, and and uh, Jimmy Northrup, our inside backer coach, Dal Nichols outside, uh, Terrence Carter with corners, and, and Trey Porter with with the DBs. I mean, those guys work tirelessly with them. And so, and we we've kind of upped our film study um, this year, upped our lifting, and you know, we haven't necessarily spent less time on the field, <laughs> but but just kind of added even more component to that. And, and so, you know, a lot of that stuff is called by the kids uh, where, you know, it's like, hey, we, we have to have, you know, say a C-gap fitter here so we can call, you know, X, Y, or Z. You know, your yeah. choice. We'd prefer this, but if you get to this, great. What would you like to do here with this split by so-and-so? Great, call it. What do you, you know, so you're kind of teaching them not the how, but the why behind it. And I think that's been tremendous for our kids where they really understand, hey, what is the offense trying to do? What are we trying to take away? You know, and then this is how we – these are a couple options for us to do that. And so when you do that, like it's not just the kids looking over or relying on the coach every single time because that information has already been preloaded to the kids where you've taught them to essentially be coaches on the field and what and, and be able to stop what we're trying to stop. Okay. I think one thing that helps that particular group, because you mentioned some names that like – they're effective in the classroom just oh. teaching math or whatever they're teaching. Um, yeah, yeah. So, no so these are te these are oh. it's coaches and their teachers. Any, any coach, and, and I'll say this for all coaches across the state, and, and this is, uh, you know, it's like I love taking credit for having a really smart team with, yep. that makes good, really good grades, but in reality, they're just a special group of kids. Yep. Um, you okay. know, we, you, if you've coached long enough, you've had a team that the eligibility list may look like, you know, Santa's you know, Christmas list or something, and then you've had one that's super short. And, and we haven't had, we've had zero eligibility problems. Oh, that's nice. um, our team GPA is through the roof. Uh, the guys are super, super smart kids. Um, and, and parents out there, I give you all the credit on that. So we, we still push the same stuff. We have study hall. I have coaches that, that do come in on their plan and, and tutor and at lunch and all that kind of stuff to help kids. But we've always done that, you know. And, and this year, it's just kind of a different group of kids where you okay. know they're super super bright bright bunch. All right. Well, I, I, I would one hundred. I'd love to take all the credit, but I've, I can't. I've taught several of them, and I kind of know where they're coming yeah, from. Uh, so. Super bright kids. Let's go switch perspectives. Putnam City. Uh huh. What, what do we expect to see as, as fans you out know, there? PCO. You know, probably the the best three and eighteen that you'll see in the state, and I mean that. I mean those guys are athletic. They're coached well. They run well. They play really hard. You know, you you'd expect like, hey, this team hasn't had just tremendous amount of success. Let's, you know, you, you watch them and you're like, man, kids are flying around. You know, kid, their coaching staff's doing a tremendous job, still have those guys playing really, really hard. Uh, they line up well. Um, they'll send a lot of pressure on defense. Offensively, they'll take some shots. You know, they have the speed and all those kind of things. And, and they're really just in every game that you'll watch them, they're in all these games. And then they just make some kind of critical error where, you know, then, the, then it kind of spirals. But, you know, no one's just came and just blown them out of the water. You know, it's always been a game. Um, you know, it's, it's, it was almost 0-0 with Deer Creek going into half and then, you know, a couple right. late touchdowns. Uh, but, you know, so they, they can play ball. You know, they're really, really good. Um, you know, I don't want to give anyone a bulletin board, you know, material or anything, but 
but my guess is it will not shock me if they win a playoff game. Okay. You know, when they, when they, I will not be shocked if they win the first round game. Uh, they, you know, our staff has talked about that. Like they're a really good team, so they definitely have our attention, and uh, we'll have to bring our A game to have a chance. Of course, we're gonna we're gonna save all the playoff talk because um, really this this game can kind of seal seal the playoffs. Good. So we're gonna save that for next uh, next coaching show okay. right before senior night. All right. And that way we can kind of talk about senior night, all that good all stuff, that. and like kind of highlight our seniors. All right, and of course, the most important, everybody out there wants to know is a big time coach like you how do you handle your halloween game the halloween game actually we we've got we have we have jv ninth grade on okay. halloween okay on monday and so the, the kick actually got moved up not not by our doing just happened to be the case uh but you know all my coaches with small kids are, are you know i don't think they're too sad so they can still go and okay. trick-or-treat and you know obviously i have small kids and so we'll be you'll, you'll find us on the, the streets of choctaw uh you know trick-or-treating and you know hoping for some butterfingers and Kit Kats. Now, so. do you split your kids up so you can like make sure sure maximize profits? Yeah. So yeah. like we really okay. have them like going around. We don't we don't want to you know put them all just in, in attack in one house. You know I have four kids and you know four boys. Yeah. So right, we try to right. put them little platoon leaders and send them all around strategically around Choctaw to get the the biggest hoard of, of candy that we can. And so, so with four kids, you can't play man. You and your wife no, can't play man no, to man. You no, got to have zone coverage with your kids. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So we uh you know the new the new. The newest baby, Creed, you know, is only two months old. Like you okay. get a lot of, lot of, lot of candy for the the little bitty ones. So I love the little bitty ones because that little just bitty got one, in the carrier. Would, would yeah, you know, get all the candy, and I'd have to help, you know, <laughs> help it, enjoy yeah. the candy. That That's was right. That was uh, a. Yeah, that's that was right. my secret, you know, my sneak attack, my, uh, now my special my, play. My, my second one, Keon, who's three, he has his own baby, Keon, too, that he has. That, so okay. he has his own baby since we have the new baby, and so he changes that baby's diaper. So I think, so technically we have five. Okay. Five boys coming out. Well, so. that's a good, so, yeah, if you're going to give me candy, give my baby candy. <laughs> I like I like this. This yeah. is a good strategy. He's, he's one that will do that, too. So. Okay, so, uh, you know, you know, next Tuesday, share, share some of the love if you have too much. We'll, we'll bring some in. But uh, I think that wraps us up. So uh, I'm excited about tonight's football yes. game. And, uh, of course, until next time, stay classy, Chuck Todd.